Donatelli and welcome to Reader Seeks Romance. I am joined today by my sidekick Gail in New York. Hi Gail. Hi Liz. I looked at a few of those teases that you put on with James Bailey. I just love that English accent. The fish and chip shop. I mean, no, the both of us were really disappointed. We didn't get a chance to go to England this summer. Thanks, but you know what? COVID. When I watch the interview with James, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea, make sure my pinky is up, and I will fantasize about being in England. Cheers. Hi, James. Welcome to Reader Seeks Romance. Hello. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure. Can you tell me about your debut rom-com, The Flip Side, which I read and I found hilarious and charming and sentimental and sweet and romantic and all that good stuff? So The Flip Side is a book about a man in his 20s called Josh. Um, Josh has had pretty much the worst start to the year imaginable. Um, he's just broken up with his girlfriend. He's lost his job. He's had to move back home with his parents. So he decides he's going to flip a coin for the entire year to make all his choices. I'm hoping this coin is going to help him find himself and find love. Um, and the book kind of just follows his journey throughout this year. So how much of your own life did you include in Josh's story? This is the question that everyone always wants to ask and wants to know. Um, I think I'd be lying if I said there was none of it. Um, I think lots of debut authors often kind of pull stuff from their own life and and it's no different here. Um, you know, I'm from Bristol like Josh. I'm the same age as Josh. Um, I haven't been through quite the same experiences, but certainly I've, you know, I've used things which have happened to me or also stories that friends have told me or things I've seen. Um, so certainly lots of it's drawn from real life or personal experience. Do you believe that flipping a coin is a sound way to make a decision? They have done studies. I can't remember which university is a university in the States. And they have done a study to show that people are happier if they use a coin to make decisions. Um, so there are obviously some people who do it. Um, I tried it out a bit when I was writing it just to kind of get into the character's mindset. And it's quite addictive. Um, I'm not sure if I could, <laughs> could do it all the time. Uh, maybe for like small decisions, but I'm not sure if I'd put the big decisions on it. Okay. So which, which kind of small decisions did you use for the coin? Well, at the start, I was, just, I was just, you know, like, what should I wear or what should I watch or what should I eat? Those kind of things. Okay. There is like an element. It does take away, you know, if you, decision making. It's quite nice to just think, okay, what should I do today? Um, right. And I think also that aspect of kind of, you know, what you want when you see what the, the coin says. So if you are undecided, then you see, oh, it's, I don't know, wear the red top today. You're like, yeah, that's what I want anyway. So I think it does kind of clarify what you wanted. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense, actually. So it's very clear uh, from the flip side that comedy is your superpower. What fuels your funny? Is it misery, family, profound disappointment, <laughs> all of that and more? I think, um, I think just being observant on your like, everyday life and just... You know, I think you, every day you see something funny which happens either to you or to, to someone you see and just kind of noting these things down. And then hopefully at some point you can actually use them in a book or whatever. So I've got like a notebook of various funny things I've seen or have happened. Um, so I think you can find humour in any any place, really. I think as well, the good thing about trying to write something funny is if something bad happens to you, you can kind of see the, the comic side to it. So if you're in a bad situation, which in a normal situation you'd be like oh you know this is awful whereas now I'm in this like mindset well, actually that was quite funny yeah it was bad it was depressing but I can write about it so it kind of makes everything a bit better really if you can right. see the side to it I uh that's cool I, do you have do you surround yourself with a lot of funny people or are you the funny person in your group <laughs> so, I don't know what they'd say <laughs> <laughs> um I, I would say I'm, I'm mildly amusing, but yeah, there's certainly the the characters that Josh's friends are kind of inspired by a couple of my real life friends and um, Jake, the real life Jake is is quite um quite funny in real life. So I'll, I'll give him some credit for some okay. of the, the humour. Have you 
faced any gender bias on the road to publication, being historically men do not write romance novels? Um, so I remember when we were sending out to publishers here in the UK, one of the publishers we sent it to did reject it. There might be other reasons they rejected it, but one of the reasons they rejected it was because they said it was harder to to pitch a male-led, male-authored um, romantic comedy. So they may have just hated the book and <laughs> that was an excuse, I don't know, but that was that was their, you know, the reason they gave us the rejection, um, which is interesting. Um, as you say, obviously they know the demographics which buy these books and maybe they've tried male-led books before and it haven't worked, but so certainly that has happened. Um, but then equally, I'd say on the on the flip side, to to, <laughs> to get the term in there, um, it's been nice to have lots of readers say, oh, they've never read a rom-com written by a man. So I suppose it's had that positive publicity as well um, and benefited from being a bit different. Which actors would you cast in the film version of the flip side? And I already have who should play um, Josh, but let me hear what you say. I'm interested in hear you think now. Um, I don't know. This is this is the question that my friends we always talk about. I think this is Lena. Like we talk about before you even finish writing the book, that you kind of automatically think, "Oh, he's going to be." It. Um, it's difficult. So we've had some talks with production companies, and um, hopefully things will be happening there. And some names have been mentioned, which I probably can't say. Uh, <laughs> um, but I don't know. There's quite a few. British actors in that age group who I think would be good. Um, I don't know. I, I'm wary of saying a name and then someone else playing it. But yeah, who do you, who do you think? Jack Whitehall. Because so I, I would quite like Jack Whitehall as, um, as Jake. Really? Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Well, I'm obsessed with Jack Whitehall. <laughs> so that's probably why I envisioned him. But he, I could complete at one point, as I was reading, I actually envisioned him. That's Jack Whitehall. Like, really? I'll pass that on when I have my next uh, thing called the production company. I'll tell them that's who we need. And if this movie gets made with Jack Whitehall, I expect to, like, an invitation for, like, the red carpet premiere. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a deal. Okay, I'm going to hold you to that. I finished the first draft of book two. In the flip side series, or...? It's, it's a separate, separate um, standalone novel. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to say, but it is, it is a, it's another romantic comedy um, set over two time periods. It's set in the 1970s and um, recent presence. I've heard that the second book is hardest to write. Um, would you say that's about? Certainly out of the two. I'm hoping book three would be easier. Um, I don't think book two is particularly easy and I don't think it's helped during the global pandemic where, where like, I, you know, I've been stuck in a small flat with anything to do with writing. It's probably not great for your mental health. <laughs> in the book, Josh uses a 50 pence coin. Yeah, and I, I brought the 50 pence coin, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so pretty. Since coronavirus, we've all obviously been told to stop using cash here. So like no one actually uses cash anymore. So it's actually like look for this 50p today to try and find it. Oh, wow. I have broken down the coin toss into categories. And under those categories, I have two questions. One I'm going to ask for heads and one I'm going to ask for tails. Celebrity encounters. Okay. okay. Heads, I ask a question about George Clooney. <laughs> Tails, I ask a question about Emma Stone. Oh. Okay, so go ahead, you flip and you show me, and you'll have to end up telling me which is heads and which is tails, because I don't know anything about a 50 pence coin. All right, here we go. Okay. It is, I don't know if you can actually see it, it's tails. Tails, okay. I asked you a question about Emma Stone. According to your bio, you were scolded by actress Emma Stone. How and why? Uh, I used to work as a showbiz reporter, did all like the red carpet premieres. And Emma Stone was like the only interview I ever really messed up, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and she was at the time she was going out with Andrew Garfield, who played Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. um, and we were told we weren't allowed to ask anything about their relationship. 
but the way it works in a red carpet is obviously she works her way down and I was right at the end of the carpet and obviously everyone had asked all the other questions by the time it got to me and I was like do you know what let's ask it anyway so I asked her about Andrew Garfield she wasn't very happy and she turned around and asked me about my relationship with Andrew Garfield instead which was quite amusing um, but no she, she seemed a nice funny person but I, I was a bit starstruck with her. Oh, now, how is it that you worked on the red carpet? Did you work for um, a local news organization or an online um, show? Or? No, I just done it kind of freelance. So when I was at, I was at university in London um, and I wanted to go to the premiers and I set up a website and kind of blagged my way into the premiers and yeah, <laughs> and did red carpet reporting for a few years. So wow. I got to interview lots of famous people. That, um, I will say about George Clooney. George Clooney was also a very nice man as well. So okay. He's probably the nicest person, I've, nicest celebrity I've met. Honors and accomplishments. Okay. Heads, I asked you a question about the 2012 Summer Olympics. Tails, I ask a question uh, about a walking tour. Okay. So go ahead, you can flip. Don't smash my laptop screen. Um, it was Tails again. Tails. Okay. Uh, what inspired you to found Bristol Free Walking Tour in Bristol, England? And what kinds of special sites are there in Bristol? I'm going to be like representing the tourist board here in Bristol now. Um, so what inspired me? So I went traveling after university. I went traveling around the world. Um, I think I went to 21 countries or something around, um, around the world. And lots of those countries I went on walking tours. Um, and I thought it was a nice idea. And I came back to Bristol, um, got a proper job, didn't like the proper job, decided to set up my own company and yeah, set up walking tours and started showing lots of tourists around Bristol. It, it was good fun. Um, you got to meet lots of people around the world. It was nice, good exercise. Um, the most what's here, we have the Clifton Suspension Bridge. If you Google that, it's a very nice bridge. It's just a nice city, right? Banksy, street art, Banksy is probably the most famous. Yes, yes. The last question. Heads, I ask you about UK foods mentioned in the book. Tails is a US character question. It's got to be heads this time. It can't be tails four times in a row. It's heads. Heads, I get to ask about UK foods. All right. What is a chippy? a Sainsbury meal deal, and a tub of celebrations. <laughs> yeah, it, it was funny when um, I got my American edits back and the stuff they changed was interesting for me to find out what wasn't known. Um, obviously those things evaded that process. Um, <laughs> a chippy is a fish and chip shop. Is it like fast food, I guess? So yeah, you would normally just walk in and it'll be, you'd have like the, it's not I like some silver metallic counter where they've got the fish and chips permanently ready for you to take away. Okay. So they're just cooking it all the time and it smells a really strong salt and vinegar smell in there. Oh, ah, um, okay. It's not really fishy smelling. It smells more like salt and vinegar. No, it's very salt and vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's better because I immediately think of just fried Ew. fish. Sainsbury's meal deal is so Sainsbury's a supermarket here. And, and they do a meal deal. So you go and get your sandwich, your pack of crisps or chocolate bar and a drink for three pounds, which is, I don't know, $5 probably. Um, so they, there's quite a lot um, of selection involved though, what you get for your money. And crisps or potato chips, what we would call potato chips? Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, okay. What exactly is a celebration? No, so celebrations, uh, they're like a box of assorted chocolates. Mm. What's a tub exactly? Because I envision like... I'd say it's probably about like that big, maybe. Wow. I'd say you probably get about 50, 60 chocolates in there. In a future rom-com, would you consider writing an American supporting character named Liz Donatelli? <laughs> of course, yeah, that's... That's definitely something I consider. That's the correct answer, James. Thank you. <laughs> well, James, it has been um, a wonderful delight to uh, chat with you. And I thank you so much for making time to visit me on Reader Seeks Romance. Hey, thank you very much for having me. It's been, it's been a good laugh. <laughs>